Hi, I'm Seb Morgan and I am a martial arts teacher. I've been into martial arts for 35 years and I've been a teacher for almost 30. Um, I have a school in the north of England, in Cumbria. The two martial arts that I teach uh, are Shaolin, Northern Shaolin, um, and Yichuan. And today I am going to show you a bit of an introduction to, to each one. Basically in martial arts there, there are two basic forms of martial arts. Uh, those of external expression and those of internal expression. Yeah? So external, it's very simple, straightforward. External expression means outside of course, but it means the, the, it's the martial arts that the focus is on the outside, so, so and usually you'd see them as the more violent ones, if you like. Um, but those are the ones of external expression, karate and uh, taekwondo and kung fu, and, uh, which by the way, kung fu is not a martial art. Kung fu is um, what you can do with time and effort. It's, it's a, a quiet technique, basically. So, so um, uh, an example I always give is if you, in the morning, when you tie your shoelaces, just stop and think what it is you're doing. And there's a massive dexterity in what you're doing. So, so you're just putting one finger down and a loop, and then you're going through and you're doing quack, and then you're doing the same on the other side and just walking off. But if you stopped and thought about the movement that you were actually doing, um, you'd realize that there's massive technique, acquired technique. Uh, and that is what in China was called Kung Fu. So, so if, if I gave uh, a pair of trainers to someone who'd, who never who wore loafers all his life, uh, they, they wouldn't know what to do, right? But you started when you were a toddler and they taught you how to do it and then it became second nature. So in the same way, you can have a good Kung Fu uh, when pouring tea and not spilling it, or when buttering a piece of toast or putting your, your I don't know, your dress on. So that's an acquired technique that after practice and practice, it becomes second nature, and that's Kung Fu. Uh, what must have happened is that some Westerner walking down uh, the roads of China would see one master uh, greet the other one and, and, and they'd ask, how's your Kung Fu going? Which was basically, the acquired technique of the martial art that they were practicing uh, and then it came over to the West as Kung Fu, the martial art, but it's not that. And, but going back to, to what I'm going to show you today, um, each one, uh, going back to what I was saying before, two types of martial arts, external expression and internal expression. External expression is when you've got your guard and your focus is on the outside. So I'm prepared, I've trained for many years <laughs> and I am attacking out there. So I'm moving to strike and the expression of my martial art and my movement is towards the outside. Now, internal expression is martial art like Tai Chi, for example. They, they involve much more meditation and what happens is uh, if, if I'm doing a, a movement like that, I'm not thinking, even though this movement is, is to, to throw someone across your leg, yeah, onto the floor, when you train and you, when you practice, this is, this is stroking the horse's tail, right? Now, to do that, you have to focus inwards, right? So internal expression, so, so you have to think and imagine this is, this is a tail I'm a, and I'm stroking it uh, and I'm moving in this way and my hip is doing this and my back is doing something. So the focus is not out there but in here. So suddenly I start thinking about my breathing and what's it doing and I'm thinking about the movement itself, right? So martial arts of external expression and internal expression. Shaolin of course is external expression 
uh, and uh, each one is internal expression, right? So each one is formless, it has no form. It was uh, decoded or created, if you like, by um, a, a, a Shifu called uh, Wang Xiang Sai. He starts decoding this martial art that has to do with analyzing movement and intention. So basically, Yi Chuan yeah, is the boxing or is the art of intent or of intention or some people say imagination because there's a lot of that involved, right? So the martial art is based on, on uh, different postures called Chang Chuan, uh, which you meditate in, yeah? And you create an intention within the posture. So if I'm doing the basic Chuan Chuan like this, I'm hugging a tree, yeah? and I'm pulling it out of the ground and then I'm sticking it back in the ground and then I'm pushing it forward and then I'm pulling it back and then I'm splitting it in half and then I'm putting it back together again. Those are called the six forces in each one, right? So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, dun, 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 dun. but with no movement. It's all in here. So basically, even though after many, many years I started doing yoga to uh, now for 12 years every day, uh, and I went down to the south of India and, and, and met uh, a guru down there and, uh, and I started doing this other type of meditation. Um, this, this kind of meditation, and I'm comparing it to the yoga because the yoga that I did was basically trying to not be the body and not be the, the, the breath and not be the mind, right? And, and which is fine, but this is using the mind as a tool, very important tool, the, the, your, your mind is, uh, to integrate the movement within the body and the mind to be able to um, reproduce movements within the most natural way. And to do that, we have to break down everything we've learned. Right? So, <laughs> or most of it. So, so we grow up into this uh, society and, and they tell us that this has to be in a certain way and we move in a certain way and, uh, and think that movement, natural movement, if you break it down, is fascinating. Because, let's say, for example, as, a, as an example, when we walk, right? I'm standing here, right? Let's say, I'll try to be in, within the, 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 the frame of the camera. I'm standing here. If I want to walk, right, I have to break my own balance to walk. Think about that. If I want to walk without breaking my balance, my own balance, my center of balance is here, right? Hips. I can't walk, yeah? Let's say I wanted to walk without breaking my own balance. I would have to do this, down, out, then push forward, bring, down, out, change the weight, bring, yeah? But natural walking, or walking as it happens, after many years of gathering Kung Fu while doing it um, is breaking your own balance. So if I want to walk, I have to do this. Yeah? So when I do that, I walk. Yeah? And that's why you see toddlers, very small children, learning to walk, le learning how to walk, they st yeah? They're, tr they're trying to control their own loss of balance. And that's really interesting and fascinating because there's something that acts on all of us, which is very important with movement, and that's gravity, yeah? So if there was no gravity, we wouldn't even do that. We'd be just floating around, right? So. Each one, 
wants to create absolute stillness to start with, yeah, and within our mind create the intent of certain movements. So it's all down to movement, technique, kung fu, yeah, and meditation. Because meditation, complete stillness, is what, what's going to give us then, that's Chan Chuan, Shili, which is to start to move, slightly move. Yeah? Now, of course, it's very difficult for me in a 15 minute video to uh, address the whole martial art, which, which <laughs> is still taking me more than 30 years, right, to, to master. Now, that's why, and the other thing is, I am not, uh, usually I don't do um, online classes because I believe you have to be there. You have to see the person moving, you have to see how they place their feet, you have to, you have to help them, you have to move them, touch them, tell them to, 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 to modify this and that, and through a camera it's very difficult. But, nevertheless, I'll, I'll show you uh, a bit of a warm-up, uh, I'll tell you about each one, in case you can get some practitioner close by and, uh, um, and, and take a class or, or, or two, see if you like it, and, um, and tell you about the, what, it, what it is about. Right? So, um, let's start. Basically, the, the warm-up for each one is uh, very simple, it's slow, um, and it starts like this. You're going to start with feet together, yeah, now bend your knees, hands on knees, two fingers under your rotulas and you're going to start turning to the left, so one, your back should be straight, as straight as you can get it, your shoulders down, relaxed, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, legs apart, the width of your shoulders, hands on your hips. And you're going to turn right, like drawing a circle on the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, now, hands. You're gonna, yeah, wide stands, and you're gonna turn your arms in front of your face towards the right. So one, two, your fingers should be stuck together, and your thumbs in like that. Three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, forward. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, one way and the other one, the other way. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah? That usually, <laughs> if you've never done it before, is quite a difficult move, uh, even though it looks simple. And what might help is you break it down. So one hand out, the other hand to the back, you hang, crossing. And you turn from your hips, yeah? And then, when you decide, turn down. Turn down. Turn down. Yeah? Now that is to start practicing. It's helpful. Of course, then this turns to this. You're not doing it anymore, and you just practice it like that. And then the other way. And then there's one like that. Sideways. <laughs> but anyway, those are different exercises that have to do with loosening your boundaries that have to do with your mind. Yeah? Um, like, for example, if I tell you to do this, one, two, three, four, five, yeah? It's okay, yeah? You can do that. Now, if I tell you to do two hands, fair enough, we can do it. Now, I tell you to do, start with the top one and with the bottom one, yeah? That's when the mind starts thinking, ah, <laughs> right? But, I tell you to do this, yeah? Like that and like that. Oh, I suddenly can do it, right? So what's happening? If you do that, you're actually doing what you couldn't do before. But what happens? Your mind, when it's like that, it needs to think up and down, down and up. But when it's like that, it just sweeps, yeah? But you're actually doing something that you couldn't do before. Yeah? And that's part of this training, is basically expand your, your, your boundaries in your mind to be able to address movement that is difficult at the beginning, but then becomes natural. Yeah? Um, let's continue. Uh, in fact, I'll show you two basic postures that we use in Shaolin. Yeah? Uh, and that are also used a lot in each one. Yeah? One is Kung Pu, which is, uh, basically means bow and arrow. Yeah? And the way you build it, or you construct it if you like, is feet together, you're going to open your right foot 45 degrees, then open your left, the width of two fists. Then that left foot is going to move forward, yeah, with that one staying where it was, 45 degrees. Your hip is going to be facing forward, not sideways, and your shin is not going to pass the right angle to the floor, yeah, because if not, it's going to hurt your knee, right? So that's Kung Pu, and you can do it on the left hand side, yeah or on the right. It's a very common uh, posture that you see across uh, a lot of uh, disciplines, martial arts. Yeah? You see this in karate, or kung fu, of course, or what they call kung fu. The other one, second basic posture, called mapu. Mapu means on horseback. So, legs apart, Double the width of your shoulders. Right hand in the Tantien. Yeah? 
Tan Tien is three fingers under your belly button, right? So right hand, three fingers on, under your belly button, left hand in the center of the body and right under your chin and then forward. And then you're gonna go down, yeah? Your hip is gonna rotate backwards, your bum is slightly out, your feet are still parallel and you're gonna stay there. Yeah? That's Mapu. As you can see, it's called on horseback and you can see why. <laughs> Right, so far so good. We keep on with um, the warm-up. Once you've got this movement, yeah, I'll show you, I'll, it's very difficult because this is a process, right? It's, you can't do it in a 15-minute video, but I'll show you. Uh, I, you can try it and, and see what you decide about it. Um, we're going to do the same movement like that. Yeah? Now, this, the each one hand for practice and for Chan Chuan and everything is a very specific one. It's not just a simple, like a claw. The best way to describe it that we have is you're grabbing a tennis ball on the inside, yeah, and a basketball on the outside, yeah. So that's the each one hand. Then it's not tense, it's relaxed enough to keep the shape, the form, but it's not tense, yeah. And everything is like that, it's relaxed and natural. Now, when you do this movement, yeah. You start training with E, yeah, so intent. And basically, that's in your imagination, you have to imagine that this is happening, basically. When you go down, you're sticking your fingers in mud, which is up to your knees. And when you go up, you're sticking your fingers in gelatin and jello, which is the sky's jello, right? So you have resistance all the way. So there and there. Now, when you're sticking your, your fingers in mud, your body, which is basically feet parallel and in a bent position, yeah, with your hip rotated forward, your body pushes up and when you're doing the sky it's hard and your body comes down and then it goes up right now breathing you exhale when you're down, you inhale when you're up. Your mouth is shut, air is coming in and out through your nose, and the breathing is as low as you can get it in your abdomen, right? So that's one of the basic practices. And now I'll finish by showing you the basic practice of all, which is Chan Chuan, which is, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Quite, it's quite uh, a lot of information. I go back to the basic position. So feet, more or less, the width of your shoulders, even though that's personal, it could be slightly more, not less, not recommend it, but you'll find your position, yeah? Now, you're standing there, your feet are parallel, bend your knees, yeah? And when you bend your knees, boom, your hip rotates forward. When your hip rotates forward, it flattens this natural curve we have at the bottom of our spine, yeah? 
So that's the, that's the position there. Now, then you go forward one degree. Your back is straight, so your weight is in the front part of your feet. And under your heels, yeah, there is an ant. And the ant is held by the head from your heel. If you go too far forward, the ant escapes. If you go back, you crush the ant and you kill it. So you have to keep it there from trying to get away. Yeah? So, recapping, feet are parallel, bend your knees, rotate your hip forward, this goes flat, you're hanging from the sky, and then a degree forward so that you can hold the ant. Now, your arms come up, yeah, into this position. Your hands are, to start with, at the same height as your shoulders in the Yichuan position, yeah, the Chan Chuang position, right? Tennis ball and a basketball on the outside. Your elbows are down, so they're not up, they're slightly down. And you are holding a crystal ball there. If you open too much, it falls and it breaks. Yeah? If you hold it too tight, it smashes. So you're just holding it there. So, so far you're holding a tennis ball, a basketball in each hand, and a crystal ball there, right? Now, you're also holding a ball here. Same deal. If, you, if it's too loose, it'll fall and break. And if it's too tight, it'll smash. So you're holding it, just holding it. Your eyes are open and out into the horizon, slightly above it. Your mouth is shut and you basically stand there and just concentrate on your breathing. Yeah? That's initially what we would have our students do at the beginning. Yeah? I won't go further because this has endless roads that we can transit uh, and it needs uh, um, more time, basically. But in 15 minutes, I think uh, I could uh, give you a, a, a wide, swift sweep of, of what it entails. So I hope you, you found this interesting, uh, at least interesting enough to try and find someone who can teach this close to where you are and, uh, and, and give it a go. And unfortunately, as I said before, I, I don't give online classes. Um, I think this has to be a uh, one-to-one -one experience. So, um, thank you very much and uh, see you soon.